We're here with uh, Susie and Jeff Eastman from the North Canton Paranormal Detectives. And Jeff and Susie have created a awesome piece of equipment. And we wanted to interview them to find out a little bit more about the equipment mm -hmm. and um, see where it's available and hear any of their experiences with the equipment. And I've got it here. It's the Paralite. Um, it's an awesome piece of equipment. We've actually taken it out on uh, one um, investigation so far. We have a couple more set up. So we hope to get... Uh, get it out in the field more and um, the first investigation you know it's hit or miss with investigations we all know that mm -hmm. um, you can't force something that's not there um, we didn't have a lot of activity that night with paralyte but uh, but that's that's good I think because it, it just sh shows that it, it's not uh, it's not fake but if you definitely put your cell phone up to it somewhere here you can see it definitely goes off yep so I'll put the cell phone away and I'll let you guys talk about your equip the, the, uh, the equipment. So it about a little over a year ago, I was actually trying to design a pair of K2 dowsing rods. And I, at the time I used my electric light wire and I thought, Hey, if I had different colored wire and I had the sensor at the tip and I had a, an electrical buddy that I work with, and he was making the circuit card to make these K2 dowsing rods. So the idea was if there was something in front of your dowsing rods, the rods would change colors. That didn't work out so much, but it really got me looking at the K2 aspects of it. So that led to actually the, the lantern. I having problems with the, the standard K2 out in the field. I say, hey, did you see that go off? No, I didn't see it. Well, tilt it my way. Fortunately, with our K2, it's got a Geiger counter sound to it. And when we have it next to our um, digital recorders, I'll know when I listen to the EVPs, I go, oh, I can hear that, that Geiger counter sound. And somebody said that the K2 went off. There you go. It must have gone off. But again, it was very limited. So um, I was a school uh, sub this past year. <laughs> That's, I, I conned him into doing that. <laughs> I used all my study hall times for <laughs> sketching and coming up with ideas. I can't believe you're telling me. And then that. <laughs> running it by my electrical engineer. And we've had a couple prototypes. And uh, this was this ended up being uh, what, we were, what I dreamt up. Okay, we have to go back a little bit. Jeff's a mechanical engineer by trade. He was with a company for 34 years, but then was laid off. They merged with another company. Yeah, so um, he's always loved developing, coming oh, up with ideas, and being That's innovative. He can fix anything around our house. You know, it's amazing if the way I, his mind works. If I can't fix it, I'll, I'll break it first and then try to fix it. So. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have a CAD program, a 3D printer. Um, if it's an electrical layout, I go to my buddy's house. He does little breadboards for me. Um, we just put it all together and then and, and test. And uh, boy, I tell you, I really appreciate the whole nine yards of sales, marketing, commodity, procurement, um, shipping, research and development, all that coming together because now you're responsible for it all. And, and, and I want to buy this. So you sure you really don't want to buy that? Well, my wife will ask me. You guys, you have to make sure you really need that. So <laughs> He's so into research and development. He's like, oh, I'm going to buy this. Oh, I got a new idea. Oh, I got to do that. And I'm like, honey, you know, we have to kind of have a business model here if this is what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I did have him subbing for a while because I teach and we needed subs. I said, we got to keep you busy. But now this is keeping him plenty busy. So later on, I'll tell you about my latest <laughs> invention, but not now. <laughs> sort of a spinoff for the um, things that I am working on. <laughs> so where he gets a lot of his ideas, you know, we're investigators, so we go with a group and investigate, and he's just always seeing things that he can modify and improve. Okay. You know, oh, yeah. They're just functionally better. And so he comes home and says, you know, I think I can make that better, or I got a different idea. Yeah, if it's not your standard camcorders that – you gut them to take out the IR filter to rebuilding the IR lights 
with better IR LEDs and a uh, whole new power supply there. Um, just a lot of things. So I got my fingers in the tinkering with and building and, and doing stuff. So go ahead. We kind of like hijacked it. No, no, no. That's good stuff. No, we, we have the same thing. I mean, what, what we always say when we're out investigating is you only have so many hands. You feel like you're, you're, you're packing to go on vacation sometimes when you're walking around locations. You got all this equipment mm -hmm. and you're looking for that optimal, op, you know, really multi-faceted uh, faceted equipment that kind of meets the need. And, and really, and I hate to be an infomercial here, but you're right. That K2 meter, it is awesome, but it's lacking. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love the Paralyte. Um, everybody in the group can see it. You can kind of sit around it. You can leave it in a room. There is no doubt when, when it goes off that everybody in the room can see it. Um, so did you have a chance to watch my uh, K2 versus Paralyte? I, did. I, I did. just wanted to demo that it does everything that the K2 does and even a little more sensitive mm -hmm. to let people know if they're out and about and they go, I didn't get any hits tonight. Well, if your K2 would have, would have been right there, it would have either not done, done anything or done something. Right. So I'm kind of waiting for somebody to put some video up online. Now we did have like the first night somebody um, had it in a graveyard. They put it on a bench along with other equipment and it was going off. But I had Dave Giuliano, the owner of the ghost hunter store, I sent him the video he did notice a large speaker next to the Paralyte. And yep. then he had an SB7 spirit box going or something that was talking through the spirit. And I thought that's a little bit too close. Yep. You need to move that away. So. Yep. Yeah, it's a big no, no. Um, cell phones are a big, uh, you know, they, they trip this stuff like crazy. Talkies. Yeah. yeah walkie talkies. Yeah. Um, and of course we all have it and we forget and it's in our back pockets. Um, but um, one of the things I thought, I mean, you guys have really thought of everything. Um, you know, with most equipment, you don't get instructions. You guys have a very detailed instruction sheet. I mean, that blew me away. But wait, there's more. You even get a bag. <laughs> and I do, I do that ironing, I want you to know. Yeah. Well, it's awesome. I mean, you guys have thought of everything. And then the light, you, you even say, you know, don't submerge. I don't know who's putting it underwater or who's giving it wet. Yeah, don't put it in the rain. The water will, it can't do that. Right. Well, not this version yet, right? <laughs> yeah, that might be version 3.0. Yeah, something. good. To low water. I'll think about that one. Yeah. How many versions are, are we up to now? No, this is the first. This is the first version, Ooh. but I've already thought of uh, Paralyte Plus and there, things. I'm not going to let anything out of the bag on that one. <laughs> if, you were, if you had one and you were saying, you know, this would be better if it had this. That's, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm just going to throw one thing out there and I don't know what it is. Jeff hasn't shared anything with me, but if it's sound, just make it to where you can turn it off. Please. Yeah. We were talking, I mean, this isn't something we're going to do for a while because you know, uh, this is going great and I think it's bright enough that everybody can see it. Absolutely. We thought about sound, but it would be very annoying. Yes. <laughs> you go to a location that has, you know, inherent EMF in the building and it's like, what did you say? I can't hear you. The Paralyte's making all that noise. Mm -hmm. We've had that happen. Yep. Put a switch in it. Yeah, I agree. So the day you did the reveal, you had another piece of equipment that you opened up it was it was like a kind of an octagon printed 3d printed is it a static meter it is it's static tony do you want to share like how this all came about the well first of all shane would not tell us what the objects were that he was going to do the open box reveal with he kept it all a secret and uh, we're all trying to ask him because he's our tech manager and he has all the gadgets in the world i used to see how many cases he brings with him and when he said he's going to be doing an unboxing, oh, no, I'm going to do two unboxings. Um, so we're all at the edge of the seats wondering what it was. And believe me, it was well worth the wait because we were all very excited, especially when he pulled out the, um, you know, the Paralyte. Um, but the other object that, that he had um, didn't come as quickly as possible. This, your, your oil came right away. 
This right here was a little delayed. That's called the um, static dome. Okay. And that's from, uh, can we plug this chain? Do you want to plug, plug where we got that one from? <laughs> yeah, it's, for, it's Vortex uh, Ghost Gear. Yep. Okay. okay. And, uh, but uh, again, you know, I, I did when I was there that, that evening when we uh, did put them in the rooms, um, we did, I did witness the, the light go off um, okay. on the Paralyte. Um, we were in a living room where somebody had passed away. I think what the question was, but another trigger object went off in a different room right adjacent to us. And then my battery died on my body cam. So uh -huh. we heard a lot of beep. So as soon as we turned that off to change the battery, then the power light went off. And everybody's turning around, what's that? And people that weren't there for the, the, the unboxing didn't know what it was at first, but when they saw the bright lights and everything else, they pointed to it and they, we were all able to witness it go off. You know, that, that Great. Time. I think Shane, I think you were upstairs or outside at the time. I think you were at the graveyard when we were doing that in the living room. But I must say, I mean, this is one of those objects we look at. I mean, I would not know where even where to begin, but, you know, my seven-year-old carries around, you know, a regular lantern, you know, get that five below. And when I saw something like that, wow, why did I think of that? You know, it's one of those type of <laughs> items. And uh, I, I'm amazed by it. So you guys did a great job. Yeah. Thanks. There's somebody that, is it Kjo? Is that how you say it? Yeah, Kjo. Kjo is our, this? He's our historian. Oh, hi, historian. <laughs> She's muted. Hello, sorry, I came in. And uh, I'm the third part of the map team. Well, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Susie, this is Jeff. Nice to meet you. I'm the part that's not uh, the techie person. Let's put it that way. <laughs> The year she, keeps us, she keeps us grounded, uh, that's for sure. She yeah, and I'm, I'm the empath that can tell them what I feel when I'm in a place, but mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you the first thing about the technical part of it. Well, so we all have different roles. They get very excited and geek out, and I'm like, what does that do? <laughs> what are we doing with that? I'm kind of the other way around. I'm the mechanical. I need to see the lights flashing and the equipment going off because I don't have that empath that ability. That yeah. Yeah. But we're never afraid when we go anywhere. We're well, we need to put the darker ourselves. the better. No, not the darker. <laughs> <laughs> the lights off. Not, okay. not, not that negative. Kind of, no negative. Yeah, not negative. Yeah, I just watched um Dave Giuliano's class on demonology. demonology. Yeah. And boy did that give me a different perspective and it made me realize how careful we all need to be. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we always start out and end with a uh, Saint Michael's prayer. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. for yeah. sure. Um, so you guys, if you go on an investigation, what is your, talking about equipment, all the equipment's out on the floor or, or on the table, what's your go-to piece? No, you don't have to say Paralyte. Just before the Paralyte came around, I'm just curious to know what people went to when they, oh, hey, let's, we always pick up this one piece. What is it? Because we're always looking for new things, too. I mean, we think it's great that so many minds out there are inventing, you know, different pieces of equipment for our field. So yeah. we may want to connect or something like that. But yeah, I, from your opinion, what do you what do you guys think? This. Now, what is that? That looks like a five way speaker system. It's a four way. Four. It's, a, uh, it's a Zoom H3 VR. It's four speakers. Four mics. Right. Four microphones. I four, like it. Sorry, four microphones, not speakers. Um, and it, it's the um, it's the latest and greatest from Zoom. Okay. It, it could, it's an audio recorder. Yeah. yeah. So this is this oh, is my good. It, it record. It just audio. record. Oh. It's, still, it's very sensitive. Um, almost in some some places too sensitive. Mm -hmm. If it's raining, don't take this out. Because you'll hear it everywhere. Uh -huh. um, but yeah. uh, somebody it's, it's, talking in the building about three floors away, you'll probably. Oh, yeah. you know. I can hear every bad thing Tony's saying about me. <laughs> <laughs> so who goes through the EVPs in your group? I mean, that's uh, what you're looking for. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. <laughs> they more than me. I admit, I, I lack off, slack off every now and then. But yes, we all try to. Do our share but shane will tell you we have so many cameras so many mics out there so many recorders and you know a four or five hour night turns into 16 hours or more worth of revealing evidence oh yeah mm -hmm. definitely but so we put on an average of 10 recorders out 
at each location. Oh my goodness. We put at least, we have a DVR system that's eight cameras. We put all of those out as well as two to three handhelds, um, trail cams. Body cams. Body, body cams. Um, we just feel that it, it's kind of like fishing. Oh, yeah. um, if, if you don't have a pole out, how can you catch a fish? Right. So, and there's been, there's some rooms that people are like, no, nothing ever happens in there. Don't put anything in there. And I'm like, ah, let's just stick something in there. And guess what I get? Mm -hmm. I, I get a, you know. An EVP. A class A EVP. Right. But that uh, takes so much time. Yes. All those recorders, all yes. that time, all that video. It's like you go on one investigation and then spend a month going oh, through that. Awesome. Oh, yeah. But, but, but Jeff and Susie, the, when you get something. I know. It, it's it's like, a total high. It's, it's like crack. I, I caught two things today, and instantly I'm sending them over going, did you hear this? Mm -hmm. um, it's what keeps us all coming back. It's that needle it in the haystack. It's that mm -hmm. little piece of gold, you know. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't happen very often, and you have to realize that. But when you find it. Oh yeah. my gosh. Can you tell me what software do you use to go through your EVPs? Uh, well, I use PowerDirector. I use Audacity. Same here. I use Audacity and I also use uh, Adobe. I use um, Isotope RX7 with the, mm -hmm. some plug-in filters. And mm -hmm. um, I tell you, I used to use Audacity, but then I pushed it and pushed it and with that software and the EVPs got worse. It was introducing artifacts that was making noises yeah. that weren't there. But when you have a higher end software package that mm -hmm. is meant to do this, it's my uh, analogy is um, audacity is like snorkeling in 25 foot of water and you notice something on the bottom. Maybe you can hold your breath and get down there and you can't stay very long and you're up to the surface. When, when you have a better software program, it's like putting on a diving suit. Not yep. only are you down there, but you're in the muck going around looking for stuff that was never meant to be found. Nope. Yep. And it's I really cool. Agree with you. And the other thing, the other thing that you need is, is noise canceling headphones. Yeah, definitely. If you don't have noise canceling headphones, it, it's the same thing. It makes um, all the difference. It drowns out everything around you. And you're all of a sudden in that room by yourself again, listening. Okay. And you're hearing things that you could never hear before. Mm -hmm. So a good pair of noise canceling headphones is a must have too. Well, thanks for sharing that because we're always looking, you know, for ways to improve what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. When so, we listen on Audacity, we, we all of us will send the clips to each other. Yeah to kind of see what everybody else is hearing at the same time. And we don't tell each other in the beginning you what we hear. That's what happens. You know, Jeff will listen, then I'll listen. And sometimes we agree and sometimes we don't. And um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes Shane will enhance it. So because he has the better software so that um, Play with we can get something more clear. Right. So here's a field. I'm glad you guys are talking EVPs because I've been looking for somebody that has the same interest. Mm -hmm. I've been using what I call gray noise. So instead of white noise, which is very intense right at the, the voice spectrum, if you, it's like a bell curve. And if you try to bring it down, you're just wiping out everything. So I created what I call gray noise, which was the same intensity across the full spectrum. And when I do an, uh, an EVP session, I just play that gray noise in the background. So ask the questions. And for some reason, it really pulls out the EVPs. I don't know if the spirits are trying to talk over the gray noise or if the noise actually helps enhance what's already there. But we're using the software and it's not only the software, it's the techniques and the different tools. It's there's a lot of knobs and all that and, and things, sliders to change. I'm, I've been practicing and doing stuff for, for years now with it, but I have routines that I can run that noise through, completely wipe it out and start pulling up conversations. So I don't look through the one or two words. I look for conversations going on. And it's, there are times where I, I think they don't know we're in the room. And then somebody will say, quiet, Eastman's speaking 
or answer a question like, oh my gosh, they are listening. And so anyhow, one of these days I'm gonna make a cookbook and mm -hmm. it'll be a video showing, and I'll actually upload the gray noise for everybody. And I'll say, here, I want you to try this. Here are all my steps. And because I don't want to be the only person that hears these voices. <laughs> right. you know? So anyhow. That's well, you don't use gray noise all the time. It's just no. part of the experiments. We try different things, you know, mm -hmm. when we go places. Well, noise is one thing, lights another. I mean, you have IR, you have yeah. uh, UV. I mean, so there's all this, you know, there's the full spectrum cameras. I mean, we try everything. We, we've tried different directions. You know, why is everybody shooting it from above down why don't we shoot it above uh below up um so we're we're constantly you know it's almost like the science experiment every time we go into, into an investigation mm -hmm. and, and when i get home i'm instantly thinking how can we make this faster the setup setup takes so long well mm -hmm. you can imagine as i just talked about all the equipment oh, we spent up mm -hmm. oh, the we're, talking, system. Yeah. we're talking we're talking an hour mm -hmm. but when we At first least. When we first started out, we were an hour and a half, almost two hours into this. And I was like, this is crazy. We're going to kill ourselves every time we do this. So we started coming up with, you know, I, I've spent, Amazon pretty much owns my life. Um, but I've spent so much money finding little quick hacks that I can throw on cameras to do quick, you know, put it on a tripod and, and it's up and it's ready to go. Right. Um, but but we do we do these post wrap up things after each, each, uh, each investigation of thinking, how, how can we make this better? How can we get faster? How, you know, are we setting up equipment in there? We don't, the first time we went out, we were holding all of our uh, digital recorders. So what do you hear when you're reviewing it? Yeah. You know, yeah. The breath, well, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. So that's why we came up with just, we just set them all out and we just, we don't carry mm -hmm. anything like that around because it's just unnecessary noise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know that's just for for from our experience but i think every time you go out it's just more experience that you build off of and it's just so exciting and and you know after when you're driving home that you know you're like oh i can't do that again for a while because you know the older you get the more it's like, <laughs> those late nights early, nights early mornings you know, like, why am i spending my saturday nights i feel like i was coming back from the bar again you know why yeah. am i doing this for myself <laughs> And, uh, and then the, you know, a week passes and you're like, okay, when's the next one? You know, <laughs> we get it. Believe me. And then you start missing them. And it's like, I need to, to get my fix again. You know, yeah. <laughs> like so, we drove over to Penhurst, um, maybe a month ago, you know, and it's a long, yeah. it's about what, it's seven hours time. over, seven Ooh. hours back. That's, that's a while. And then it was $104 for the toll. It's, yeah. The that we, oh the turnpike. Gosh. What? We got that bill in the mail because they just did it automatically. Yeah. We weren't ready no for that. No more cash. It's all drive by. <laughs> yeah. Toll by plate. The toll was $104. I'm sorry, what? A, a toll was $104. Yes. Well, we're driving yeah. over on the turnpike so and coming back on the turnpike. North Carolina to Pennsylvania. It was a <laughs> seven hour oh, drive the on PA the turnpike. turnpike. I just, I wasn't expecting that. And we even got a hold of other people in our group because we thought it has to be a mistake. Nope, somebody else, it was 96. So mm -hmm. that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah turbine could get expensive. How so I got to brag about Jeff a little bit. Um, you know, he's so innovative and creative and he comes up with these ideas and it's all done in our basement. And now we have all these sections in our basement, whether it's the dowsing rod or the paralyte or the microphone or what else is yeah, going on. I have on another there. self a plug here for <laughs> some. You're talking about EVPs. So when I'm carrying my digital around, I always thought that the spirits would not know what end to talk into. So I, that's where I came up with my light. This is the, the microphone. It's got the different colors. Okay. This is the, the EMF microphone they're different so this one only records emf this is your standard and then you plug them into a splitter so one okay. channel is voice the other is emf now when you listen back you're listening and there's the question if you hear my my question was do evps have an emf component to them so you're listening to your question it's quiet, you're listening for the voice, 
EVP as you're enhancing that. If I do get something, I go down the channel below where there's EMF and I go digging to find out if it's still there. Sometimes I found different answers going on. Oh, wow. But that's my, my microphones. <laughs> and you guys have seen my electric light dots. Or somebody has, an, what'd you say? A, a green a, pair. A neon green? Who's got that? Uh, one of the guys on our team, Tony. Yeah, another Tony. Practice with them for a while. Um, I know you can move your hands, whoa, and you yeah. can make them move. And so you have to be honest, you know, with yourself. Um, but Jeff has gotten very good at them. And there's times they move and they don't do anything. And times mm -hmm. they are really swinging, pointing mm -hmm. different directions. They're actually mm -hmm. probably one of our favorite, favorite pieces of equipment. So that's and, your go-to? Um, that's your, if you had to pick one piece of equipment, would that be your go-to? Yeah. Well, the EVP recorder and probably the dowsing rods for Jeff. I don't get as much action with him, but he's got this connection. And I know he's telling the truth because he, he would never lie. What's the point yeah. of that, you know? Right. Um, and they're made so well with the ball bearings and the copper, you know, you know uh, the Full wire. Copper, yeah. And they're so oh. smooth when they move. And even... By putting the light on it, it doesn't mess with the balance at all. I know people were worried about that at first, but then they bought them and they're like, no, they work great. And so he kind of uh, came out yeah. with version 2.0 with the different colors. Yeah, somebody was had asked me, you know, they bought all five colors and I felt bad for them because that's expensive. <laughs> and then as part of this um, Paralite and different light technologies I was getting into, I thought, hey, I can do this with the dowsing rods. So now I've got um, the four colors. You just click it, and that's where I can ask the spirits. And I go, well, this is where you're gonna select the colors. I will tell you what they are in the beginning and show you. And then as we're doing them, I'll say, do you like green, yes or no? And if you don't, well, we'll change it. Mm -hmm. And you, you said know? people requested red because there was a reason with the camera. Oh, red uh, interfered less with the cameras trying to autofocus on stuff. Hmm. So we so, have people say, you know, what color do the spirits like best? Well, how do we know? We don't know. Just pick mm -hmm. a color you like. <laughs> and that's oh. what I just thought. I'm just going to give them all four colors <laughs> and well, then they can change them. Yeah, I want them to use red and green and then say if the answer is yes, move the green one. And if it's right. no, use the red one. Yeah. So, so those are really fun. We volunteer a lot, you know, like at the Canton Palace Theater. And so we let people use our equipment, you know, who are paying. And um, they love the dowsing rods. It's like their favorite thing to try. And I just think because it's personal. Yeah. You know, now I know we can say, do they work? Do they not work? And so forth. But um, I think, Jeff, you get some pretty legitimate responses. I'll know right away if they're not working. Meaning someone's in the area, I'll say, I don't want to say, quote, dead, but there's nothing going on here. And then, well, let's <laughs> move on. Yeah. So, but my, I think some of my best thousand rod sessions have been um, Ohio State Reformatory down in the basement, solitary, solitary confinement, confinement, like all by myself. And we're always respectful. I don't ask people, how did you die down here? It's you always, it's like, you know, I'm only five foot eight. How, how tall were you? Taller or shorter? And then mm -hmm. I would get a visual. Of course, you can't ever prove whoever, whoever you're talking to if they're telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. But it's the connection and getting answers. And mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And the Paralyte, you know, when you're developing things like the Paralyte, how can you test it with a spirit? You know, you can't. And so it's like you create it. And you work with it with like, um, what is that juice box? You know, the little EMF juice box yeah. to make sure, yeah. okay, guy. it's responding. You know, the pink goes on here, the blue goes on here, the green goes on here. Yeah, I do it from underneath. We can do it from the sides, okay? But it's, <laughs> love that. You don't want it too sensitive because you don't want cell phones on. and walkie talkies or just the electrical current in the house or whatever it might be. So it's that balance of you want legitimate responses, but you don't want it to be too sensitive and go off with everything. I feel like I'm in a rave right now. Sorry. Yeah. So, you know, we hope it's at a good sensitivity where it will pick up legitimate things, but it's not going to be so sensitive it picks up everything. All right, well, you guys want to be entertained? 
Oh, yeah, no, definitely. This is, this is crazy. This was called freestyle. No, just because he had no idea what he was doing. I'm thinking about a line of trigger objects. And so embarrassing. This looks like your average bear. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm incorporating. No, you can't give all your secrets away. Well, Paralyte technology and dowsing rod technology is now stuffed into the bear. I only thing I got hanging out is a little switch by his rear end here. Okay. This is for way in the future. This is he had some extra time. So I got some music. Now speakers emit EMF, and this guy's got a little EMF meter in his nose. Okay. So we're gonna back it up. Can you shut that light off? Oh boy. There. You go. So, screen's kind of bright. What we're going to do here is we're going to, can you hold him for a second? Sure. I have a better idea. <laughs> wait, wait. I'm not even plugged in. <laughs> that might help. All right, time out. We'll have it this part. So did you watch his bit? Wait a minute. It's not going. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Nightclubbing bear. <laughs> it doesn't really look like a bear in the dark. Oh, you my gosh. <laughs> wow. wow. I have a seven-year-old who will like that. Yeah. <laughs> That is cool. Really cool. I'm waiting for the disco ball to drop. I think you're covering the head. <laughs> hey, Jeff. It's a how bear many story. hours did it take you to weave <laughs> those LEDs through that bear? Six. Six hours. Oh Six God. hours. <laughs> wow. wow. 25 minutes of color. <laughs> Here, this is a standard amp pump. And wow. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. So, cool. It's hard to see it because the monitor is real bright. That's really Anyhow, cool. Um, yes. This would have to be a $500 bear if I sold it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but anyways, I had a lot of fun. We're going this Friday, tomorrow, we're going to Farnham Manor, which is near Brexville, Ohio. It's an old farmhouse. And we've been there four years ago and had a great dowsing rod session with a couple of little kids. And I want to bring this along to see what happens. <laughs> wow. so, so that's a very beginning prototype. Yeah, you got to get the cost down on that. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be a little bit profitable. Kids. You're going to some, gonna have to get some neighbor kids involved in that or something. The problem was the fur is so long, you can't hardly see it. So I'm going to buy bears and get a little shaver and shave them all down to like this is what i live with all the time would the colors be brighter on a black on a black bear i can't hear it i, I said would the colors be brighter on a black bear it a has to be bear? shorter fur it's the fur okay. that it they get embedded in the fur but a black bear is a good idea I'm trying to think of some other character animals yeah Tell me. Came up i have i have uh uh, Vortex's uh, trigger pup. I have a ba basset hound. Is that um, it on the shelf behind yes, you? Yep, yep, this is it right here. If I so that's a realistic one. Thing, yeah. he, uh, if you go to vortex.com, not to plug them you know, during, during your session, but they have a wide variety of different um, trigger animals. Yeah, I did. I, I did go there and I thought it was so neat how many different breeds they had. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So have you had a lot of good responses with oh, it? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like that is because, you know, not just kids go for it, even older, you know, spirits right. or whatever. Yeah, everybody likes pe animals and pets. And no matter what we get, you know, we, we have some, we always say, you know, pet behind the ears, he likes it and stuff like that. But, you know, we get a lot of hits on that. So that's, yeah, that's awesome. That's one of the go-to items. I think my go-to item is uh, Shane put together one of the portal boxes, the, the speaker box, ghost boxes. That's my go-to. But that the, my own equipment, that's my go-to right there. Okay. My go-to item would be the Ovilus. Mm -hmm. Which one? Uh, Ovilus 5. Okay. Yes, we have an Ovilus 3, <laughs> and it keeps saying Pluto and Apple and some and of those other spoilage. <laughs> um, how do you like your Ovilus 5? 
I like it. I, I was convinced to buy it a number of years ago because I had gone on investigation in Gettysburg and we were actually touring some of the houses and walking around. And this was with somebody who used to be a tour guide. So he knew a lot of the really good stories and it was just a group of friends. We all went and um, it wasn't a paid tour or anything, but somebody there had the obelisk at the time and we just turned it on. And the words that came was like horses, map, Calvary. Mm. And because those words so related to the location I was at, Mm -hmm. I was hooked. Okay. I loved it. Like, I just, it was just amazing that those were the kind of words that it was saying. Yeah. It also said, when we, we happened to be right out of a place where when a lot of the soldiers were amputated, their arms and legs were, were piled up for disposal. And it said arm and it said leg. And so it just. Okay, that's relevant. And, timely. And, I, and once I heard that, I was like, yep, that's what I, I want that. So have you taken it to other places and the words change? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. But we still have the Ovilus 3. And it just seems like a lot of times when we use it, it repeats the same words. Uh, it, it does sometimes. It does. It depends on where you are and what room. Um, yeah, it will. And then there's other times where you get very significant words for where you're at. Right. And we had that happen once. We were at a building and a girl, Bisman building, yeah. A girl and her friend would read stories to the children's spirits. And Mm -hmm. we asked, what is Katie's friend's name? And boom, it came up like that. And it wasn't a very common name. So that kind of was like, oh my gosh, you know. But other times we get a little frustrated when kind of the same words come up. And then we think, well, they're all kind of paranormal words and we can make it work. You know, Mm -hmm. her words you got there, those were pretty pertinent. Those were pretty pertinent. Yeah. And sometimes it does just go into a repeat mode and I'll usually just turn it off for a while and then regroup and we'll try it in a different room. But other times it's, it's spot on. Yeah. That's another one. Like when we do volunteer work that people like. Mm Mm-hmm carry it around. Shane, mm-hmm. you said you had a an ITC box where it's like a giant, funny looking radio. Well, I have um, I've taken the SBS uh, 7 and ran it through the, uh, the foot pedals and okay. uh, put, you know, kind of made it, we've made, kind of made it our own. The things that we, you know, when you're outdoors at Gettysburg Fort and Hill. Harper's Ferry and some of the real historic areas around us, Mm-hmm. It gets really hard to hear sometimes, so we've put an amp in it to boost the to boost the sound. Um, okay. So um, uh, everybody loves the, the the box. I mean, it, it mm-hmm. you know it's the P, it's the PSB seven without static, the white noise. So we've taken that out altogether, and sometimes it's relevant. Like like Kent, uh, Kjo, we were at Gettysburg, and we could hear gunfire and men yelling. Oh my the, gosh! The, the PSB seven, uh, cannon which was, fire. It, yeah, cannon fire, gunfire. They were yelling and screaming, and mm-hmm. it went on for over five minutes. Wow! So you're saying it is the, like the SB seven without the static? Yes. It's actually is the SB seven with, and it's connected to um, foot pedals and an amplifier and a speaker, and those foot pedals actually take away that static noise. Okay. Yeah. That must be an audio term because I'm thinking foot pedals. Yeah, what pedals. are foot pedals? I have um, one on my sewing machine that I use. <laughs> the, was it the reverb and a noise gate, I believe it is. Yeah, okay, noise. I know what reverb is. Yeah, it takes all that out. So you don't hear that. You know how sometimes when you're in the room and you, all you hear is that white noise and it drives you crazy? Yes. After like yeah. Yes. Right. We don't hear any of that. Oh. All we hear is what's coming over other than the white noise. It, it takes all that out. So you changed it? Yeah. Well, we just the, – the, the foot pedals removed that. Oh. Did you, did you make the foot pedals or buy them? I, I bought them. If you're interested, I can send you a list of, of what it takes to make it, and I can also <clears> – I can also take some pictures of what I have. Um, I, I share everything. I don't yeah. – I'm not looking to sell anything, but uh, it's pretty cool. It's a – you know, um, to make it – is just a little under 300 bucks. Uh, okay. but, but it's, uh, it, like Tony said, it's, it's one of our go-to pieces of equipment. Everybody loves it. Um, it draws a crowd. It does draw a crowd. 
Wow. We have People some videos. Are always if, interested. If, on our Facebook page and our YouTube page, you may see some of our videos where we're actually going live sessions with it. Wow. I, I would be interested in that because that sounds like what I do with my EVPs at home mm -hmm. when I wipe out all that gray noise or white noise yeah. to get underneath right. it. And you're doing it's it with hardware. Yeah. yeah, this is real time, though. Yeah. You don't hear it. That yeah. is really neat. It, it may sound like it's in a tunnel sometimes or like an echo, but it's more clear, a lot more clear than just listening to the BB7 um, by itself. Do you ever run into live channels when you're doing that? You do, but like, you know, like everything, you can tell when it's a radio station. Um, you know, Casey Kasem in the morning, you know, <laughs> well, that's a radio station. Or Casey yeah. might be here with us. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I you can. I, kind of... I think it sweeps through the channels too quickly. So if you get full solid words or sentences, there's no way you have five, six channels back to back like they're right. saying the same thing. So right. same voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We usually do it at a 150 sweep. Uh, so it, it, you, it's, it's a pretty good piece of equipment. You Sorry. can tell different voices too. It, it's yeah. very distinct. You can tell male, female, older, younger, child. It really does come through. Yeah. But I had a problem with using the SB7 and trying to, you know, I would go into the white noise and try to eliminate that. When I do start picking up the sentences, it sounds like you're recording somebody, but as you're recording them, you're putting your finger on the record button. Mm -hmm. And when they talk, it's stuttering. It's like, okay. Uh, 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 or you, uh, 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 you know. And you get that I would always have to try to use my um, reverb, but to try to, to blend it out to make those channels run into each other so that this, the words don't sound so broken up. Mm -hmm. That's why I got away from the SB7 and started using the gray noise. Mm -hmm. So, but that's all very interesting. I like that idea. Yeah, if you're interested, I'll send you the information. Um, I'm, like I said, we're always willing to share. We, we want to make everybody better because we like to see your information. You know, we like to see your evidence too. Um, so, yeah, so that's the downside of going being a little business. I've got uh, so much work downstairs that I'm, I'm, it's tough. We'll go somewhere and I'll say, you know what, we got to upload that video. We got to go through it. I'm two years behind on evidence. And I used to love putting things in video and get it up there and share it. Mm -hmm. Um, this year, as you know, has been a little weird because of the COVID not going places. Yeah, we feel your pain with the evidence review. Um, we had every time we, we go out to a place and we know we have evidence to review at home, we feel bad because we know those folks are waiting on us to review it. And so <clears throat> we, I think we, during the quarantine, we had three locations we had to review. So it was nonstop, you know, 30, 40 hours worth of, of going through everything and, and, uh, I think we knocked that out. We were we were knocking one location out a week. Wow. But do you do a report? A, or what do you do? Do you meet with the people and Yeah, we do a reveal. A reveal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We put a PowerPoint together, very beginning of it is given more of a background about the paranormal, and then we go right into the evidence itself at that location. Wow. Um, yep. And then we give them a file. Uh, we give the PowerPoint, but a lot of people that we have are older. They don't have PowerPoint or don't know how to play it. Mm -hmm. So we're now including a folder with everything in there, all the video group, group together in file, the audio group together in file, and still picks. And we have that uh, folder for that as well. And they just click through it on their own. Do you try to resolve? Is Are they just wanting to know what's there? Or are, do you deal with negative cases too? Or where do you draw the line? We've had our share of both. We yeah. try to stay away from the negative, but there's times where we don't know it's negative or You're we want to prove it's not negative. In. Right. Um, but, it, but, you know, the residential that we're getting, you know, either they're very excited and they're just in it for the entertainment value and they want to know what's there. Mm -hmm. And the other is like, we want to get rid of it. We, we just, we just don't want this here. So we get a little bit, a bit of both. Okay. Yeah. And then what are some of your favorite locations to go that are more public? Uh, we're trying to get away from the paid locations. Um, but we, we okay. want to, you know, we, but we have, we have done our share. Um, mm -hmm. Holderman Mansion, I don't know if you've ever been there. It's hit or miss. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can you say Holderman it again? Holderman Mansion, Holderman in Pennsylvania, by, right after Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Gain, Holderman. Gain, Gains, Gainesville? Gainsbridge. Yeah, Gaines Bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they stopped doing it for a while, but they're back to doing uh, public uh, haunts again. 
Mm -hmm. um, but once you go there once, and we've been there twice now, um, they're starting to limit it more because they're trying to do some renovating. So you're paying this, if you go with a group that's paying, you're paying the same price for if everything was open, where you go now, you can't go in the basement or you can't go in the oh. attic. And that right there, you know, I don't, I personally don't like it when it's open to the public because you get a lot of interference. Right. Uh, There's a lot of contamination. White Hill, I think in Jersey. Wait, could you speak up a little? It might be my mic. I apologize. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I keep leaning in to try to hear you. Okay. <laughs> I, have heard I, have a, I have a new cam, so it might be my mic. I apologize. That's all right. I don't um, want to stop. We, I think it's called White Hill or White Hall in White Hall. New Jersey. New Jersey. Uh, and we went there. We had some really good uh, evidence we picked up, but there was a lot of people. Most most crowd that we've ever been around investigating with other people. And that yeah. was with uh, yeah, Bob, that and, can be frustrating. Bob and Julie Bob, um, What's his name? Uh, Giuliani. He was there, too. Um, oh. But it, it was, it's a good place. We just haven't been back because, again, mm -hmm. the large crowds. We have really tried to, to not do anything that we pay and anything with a lot of people because okay. it's just it's not worth it when you're going over all those hours of evidence and all you can hear is other people. I know. It's really frustrating. Yes. Yeah. So we really don't. We do, we do residential or like bars and pubs when they're sure. closed down and we're it. Mm -hmm. because we just want to be our team in there because it's yeah. just too much interference. Yeah. And also I kind of come from the thing. I don't want to babysit anybody. Like I really want to, you know, I understand people are interested and they want to learn, but to a certain extent we have a routine that we want to do as a team and we have a goal and we want to meet it. And it's mm -hmm. hard if we have other people and we have to explain everything and, and yada, yada, yada. So, no, I, you know, it's hard. Like we yeah. do a lot of volunteer work and that's nice, but it's not the same thing as right. us being able to go out, do mm -hmm. our experiments, investigate just the yeah. two of us. Or sometimes mm -hmm. Jeff just likes to go off by himself. Mm -hmm. And that way, when you get something, you know, mm -hmm. it's not somebody else in the room. Yeah. You, know? you don't go on public hunts. It's always right. private and it's expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, well, those are paid. Yeah. The paid ones. So, mm -hmm. but we really appreciate you guys supporting us and yeah, we hope the Paralyte works out for you. Yeah. You know, when Jeff started doing this, it wasn't uh, because he wanted to start a business. It's just he wanted to come up with some unique equipment, tell people about it, you know, let people use it. Mm -hmm. But what we found out is then people wanted to start to buy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so we felt like, okay, we'll share this. We try to put reasonable prices on it. It's not a big money maker or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just kind of grew. Yeah. It's you know, kind of one idea after the other. And now we have people from the UK, you know, who are getting a hold yeah. of us. So awesome. You've got to be kidding. Small world right. now, Australia. you know, Australia, Canada. It's, it's really quite fun. And we meet a lot of interesting, nice people too. So I did a search on the Paralyte, and I, I saw you could buy it on Amazon, and you're in the Ghost Hunter store, and now you're in the UK at Infrareddy. Is there any yes. other places that you sell with or sell that, that promotes your, um, your equipment? Directly. Okay. Some people say, oh, you know, do I have to buy it on Amazon? I go, only if you have a PayPal account, then we'll skip the Amazon fees. Okay. You'll have to pay shipping. But it, it's usually 10, 15 bucks less if you go right to me because the Amazon okay. takes their little chunk. I'm looking at the two months you know, right now online. So you might be getting a call from me. <laughs> I'm really business people. I hate to say that. You know, I'm a teacher. I teach K through second grade reading and Jeff's an engineer. So we don't really have a grasp on all this yet. <laughs> well, I'm glad you do it. I, I am like so excited about this light. I cannot wait to go out and use it. It, it is really good quality. Um, I, I hope everybody goes out and buys the slide. I hope you guys can retire on the Paralyte. <laughs> well, I hope so. We just bought 500 circuit cards and I've got 250 lanterns coming to the house. Oh, gosh. So. Well, I'm number 83. <laughs> That's your serial number? Yep, I'm number 83. Put those stickers on and they're pretty straight. I tell you, I'm the quality control person. It doesn't come to the house unless it meets my standards. And well, I'm pretty picky. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've never, well, a couple real quick things, and I because yeah. I, I don't want to take up much more of your time, but the 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 quality of this light is unbelievable. I can't tell you how much just looking over it, it is such high quality. 
you're the only company I've ever seen that includes step-by-step -step instructions of what to do and what not to do. And then the, the bag is awesome to carry the light in. <laughs> and then the chipping was so quick. I mean, you know, everybody's like, oh, I hope it gets here before my investigation. It was like five days early of whatever was promised. He so, was downright giddy, downright giddy. About this well, Jeff is like, he used to run to the post office like three times a day because he was so worried about getting it out so quick. And I finally said, honey, why don't you just make it a three or four o'clock shipping every yeah. day and it will get to these people. I get home and darn it, somebody ordered another one. Because <laughs> he's so worried, you know, we care very much what everybody thinks about it. Um, we stand behind the products if there's ever any problems. Oh yeah, anytime, I mean, whether it's a dowsing rod that I've done or something else. I mean, not somebody that it happens has a problem, very often, but. I send them a replacement, say throw your other pair back in the box. There's, mm -hmm. you know, return postage. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so, um, you know, we want everybody to be happy with it. And if you have any feedback, please let us know, whether it's good or bad, because yeah. that's how we're going to improve. I can take criticism. I can. Yeah. Only if it's constructive. I have none for you. I have none for you. Well, <laughs> keep trying it. Yep. And, Just, and buy a pair of those dowsing rods and those microphones. <laughs> yeah. But don't make me feel better by... Filming it and then secretly queuing up a walkie talkie. I sure did. And go, hey, look, the paralyte went off. Jeff, are you happy now? But it's so important to know your environment. And that's why he did that other video. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how it reacts to the fuse box. This is how it reacts to a microwave. This is what it does with a cell phone. This is how far away, you know? So we're just straightforward. We want you to know what it does, it what did, it doesn't like it do. And I hope the spirits um, cooperate. And, and like you said, afraid. you can go to places like we've had our cave to a lot of places where it hasn't gone off, but something else will. Yep. So you never know which you piece don't. of equipment is going to be hot that night. Yeah, you don't. No. Well, hey, the last thing, the last thing I want to say to you guys, if you're ever in Maryland, Delaware, or Pennsylvania, please reach out to us. We'd love to investigate with you. That would be fun. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. I just yeah. like the whole social aspect of this, you know, but I don't know that that toll, $104. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to take it out of the pipe. business expenses. <laughs> we'll have to sell a few more paralytes to do it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Please stay in touch with us too. And like I said, if you have any ideas of things you want invented, or if you have feedback, positive or negative, please let us know. I am interested in the paddles. I, I will send that to you. That sounds pretty cool. I have, your, I have your information. I'll send that over. Okay. Well, we wish you guys the best. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. you. Stay safe.